Robert Edward Chambliss here. I'm known as Dynamite Bob. I was one of the bombers. Just 18 days before your so-called leader, Martin L. King, marches on Washington, causes all that ruckus. We told you all niggers, we belong here. You don't belong here. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. <laughs> yeah, overcome back to where you came from, cause coons don't belong here. This is white America. See, some of my white brothers, we decided we was going to teach them a lesson. Now, the bomb was supposed to be a warning. We gave them a warning call. We said three minutes before exploding. How was we supposed to know them color gals was going to be near where the bomb went off? <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. My name is Carol Robertson. I was born April 24th, 1949, and I died at age 14. My name is Addie Mae Collins. I was born April 19th, 1948. I died at the age of 14. My name is Cynthia Wesley. I was born April 30th, 1949. I died at age 14. Hi, I'm Carol Denise McClare. I was born November 17th, 1951, and I died at age 11. We, we are, are the four little girls, girls of Birmingham who never made it to adulthood. Imagine waking up with your family, eating breakfast, laughing, talking, getting ready for church, something you may have done this very morning. You anticipate singing in a choir and hearing a good word from pastor. Nothing out of the ordinary. But for us, on that day, it was everything but ordinary. Little did we know, our lives would change forever. <laughs> it was Sunday, September 15th, 1963. Yep, Youth Day at 16th Street Baptist Church where we all attended. We had just got done with Sunday school and was on our way downstairs to the little ladies' lounge just to change into our choir robes. My little sister Sarah came down with us, went on the other side where the stalls were while we were laughing and playing and primping in the mirror. We heard Mrs. Carolyn Mall, the church secretary, come down the stairs. She saw us in the restroom and spoke to us. Good morning, ladies. Good, Good morning, morning, Mrs. Ma. We better hurry, but we continued to laugh and play. Denise needed help with the sash on her dress and asked Addie, could she help her? And in an instance, before the bow was tied on her sash, it all came to an end. 
It was 10, 22 a.m. 10, 22 a.m. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. She's still alive. 10.22 a.m. 16th Street Baptist Church. There were many who were injured, but four lives were taken. Addie Mae Collins. Cynthia Wesley. Denise McLair. Carol Robertson. We were the four little girls of Birmingham. We killed them little colored niggers girls. I lived to be 81. They didn't even live to see 15. I was convicted 14 years later for that crime to life in prison where I died in 1985. But we're still out there, still going strong. You see, just cause we don't got our white hoods, that don't mean we don't exist. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Thank you guys. As real as that is, it actually happened, right? Some of you were living in that time and it's so unfortunate that we had to deal with that. But I wanna bring up my guest um, actor to let him talk a little bit of who he is and how he has also been affected as well with things of racial slurs and things like that. This is Benjamin. Can we give him a hand, please? He did good, right? He did his thing. Yeah. Thank you. 
I would just like to, first of all, say thank you all so very much for welcoming me and being so warm and welcoming here. I really did feel like this was my little home away from my, my church home, my other church home. Um, so I thank you for that. Um, so God is a good God. He's amazing. Um, and in my life, uh, I have my own shadows, my own faults. So when Barack Obama was elected in 2008, I thought that was the final nail in the coffin of racism. Um, because I grew up in a small town in Ohio, and I was surrounded by mostly white people most of my life growing up. It wasn't until I came to Chicago, my really good friend Rita, she started to open my eyes to the realities of being African American in this country. And um, she started just to tell me stories of her everyday life when I realized that the cops weren't always so friendly and white people were willing to call the cops for various reasons, um, unjustified reasons. Um, so it was during that point when, when God started to, to lay on my heart uh, just the true reality and just how my eyes have been closed for most of my life, as this was in uh, around 2013 even, so it was pretty recent. Um, but from that time going forward, I started to just start to see more and more of the reality, the true reality um, that the media doesn't really show you. Well, they are starting to now, I guess, so that's good. But um, And so God had put on my heart just a special caring for, for the children, for the little children. I work with children. And um, so as I started to see all this injustice, I took a look at uh, kids playing one day, and I saw white kids playing with black kids, and it just broke my heart that I knew that the black kids were going to have so much more of a hard, harder time they were going to face so many more things, and they didn't know it yet. They didn't know because they just wanted to play right now. But God just put on my heart that I needed to do something, too. I couldn't just stand by anymore. So um, I have started to teach uh, kindergartners and an after-school program and by the hand where Miss Bridget goes to as well. Um, but I just wanted to say that I apologize for my white privilege I take responsibility for that. I take responsibility for still benefiting from a system that actively puts you all down while it raises me up. And so I'm sorry for that. Thank you. <laughs>